protect your health. Living a primal lifestyle with your hosts, Nico and Ellen DeHaan. Now, Nico and Ellen DeHaan. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm Nico DeHaan, and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. We cover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Ellen DeHaan. That's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg. It's 52 degrees. Feels like 50. Uh, visibility 10 miles. Yes, sunset uh, 549 tonight. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Happy and New Year. Uh, happy New Year, baby. Yeah, this is great. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's um, it's a brand new year, so we're going to start off with. Uh, well, we should probably start off with a little. How adventure. we ended the last year. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah, uh, yeah last year Ellen bought me this great uh, Christmas present, and it was uh, a ride at Daytona NASCAR. Uh, NASCAR, and this is something I'd never done. I'd done a little racing when I was a kid, like eighteen to twenty-one, uh, but I've never done anything like that. Never been in a NASCAR, and never actually went to a race. I've seen them on TV and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Real interesting. Uh, we had a couple of friends go uh, meet us there, and uh, he did a ride, too. A drive. Yeah, a drive. So what I did was eight minutes I got to race on the Daytona Speedway in a NASCAR. And, uh, yeah, they take you through this little program. It was kind of cool. We got there about 9 o'clock, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. uh, my ride was at 10 o'clock, and uh, there was a little class beforehand, about 45 minutes. And because I was the only one there... Because it wasn't a busy class, Ellen got to sit in the yeah. class with me. So that yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. L little safety stuff and what to expect, things like that. Yeah, and they put then, you in a, in a fire suit. And, yeah, uh, I got some pictures here some, from Facebook. So that's in my fire suit there. <laughs> doing a little pose in front of the uh, Daytona. And then putting on the helmet, getting in the car. And then they tell me, okay, it's your turn, dude. So then there, there I am. Then uh, what I did was I got a little video to go along with it, too. And the video isn't that great, really, but uh, it gives you an idea and it tells you, uh, you know, what you're doing. Got up to some amazing speeds, and it was, you know, when you get those corners, it was very intense, no doubt about it. So uh, it was a, just a unique experience. I recommend anybody who has an interest in, you know, car racing to try something like that. It's very safe. I'm sure people have wiped out and things like that, but uh, yeah. you got your wits about you. You know, we're, uh, I probably got up to 120, 130, maybe even higher. I don't know, because there's no speedometer in there. But uh, yeah, that, it's very interesting. I mean, the car it has no doors. Has yeah, no you have to climb through the window. Climb yeah. through the window. Yeah. So that was just a, just a fun thing, and uh, it took us out of town, which is kind of nice too. Uh, you know, it's uh, no fun being stuck in COVID town. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we had that little adventure. It was nice. It was cold out. It was, yeah. And the, another thing that was amazing about the trip on our way back, I says, I don't want to take I four. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just always mm -hmm. crowded. So we took all, all the back roads through Lake Country, through Eustis and uh, Mount Dora. And what we noticed Mascot. is. Places yeah. I never even knew. <laughs> <laughs> what we noticed was the building that was going on there. Phenomenal. Thousands and thousands of homes going up in the middle of the state, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the swamps almost. Yeah. It yeah. was quite astounding wetlands, that I saw. A lot of wetlands. There. Yeah, and these are homes that are quite pricey. I would say half a million and up. And yeah, thousands yeah. of them. Yeah. And yeah. they're just being built. one yeah. after another. So I think we're another. expecting people here. So anyway, it's a new year. I wanted to start off with just going over something of last year, which is uh, the 10 most popular recipes of 2020. And the reason I bring this up is because maybe this is why we have so many problems with our food and with people being unhealthy. Uh, so let's just go through these things. Well, the interesting thing is that they talk about this comfort food, and that was the whole theme of 2020. Once their lockdown occurred, people were stuck in their houses, and and they turned to baking for some reason. I mean, there was a run on not just toilet paper, but there was a run on uh, flour. You couldn't get flour anywhere, and yeast right. became golden. You know. So why did this stuff become comfort food in the first place? Yeah. Well, because it's easy to carry, it's warm, it's fuzzy, it smells good well, it while makes you're you making it. Well, you feel good when you eat it. You yeah, know, it because you get that sugar reaction. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go through these. The first one is shockingly easily no need uh, focaccia. 
Focaccia bread. Focaccia yeah. bread. Mm -hmm. So this is an Italian thing, and they have the recipe on here, so this will be in the uh, Health Signals newsletter, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, and this basically is a bread with a little bit of... Uh, um, well, it's a, well, it's a yeast bread, but it doesn't require kneading, so it does require a couple of, of turns of rising. Yeah, and it has some, uh, I guess, uh, cheese on it. No, well, that, that's salt. Oh, it's salt? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, kosher it looks like salt. Cheese. Oh, okay. Big flakes of salt. Yeah. I guess I didn't read it close enough. <laughs> Next one is called Fall Apart Caramelized Cabbage. No, this is kind of interesting. I don't know where the caramelized comes from because it's made with tomato paste and all kinds of Italian seasonings. I think they also use some uh, um, maple syrup with it, maybe to caramelize it. I don't know. I read the, uh, read the recipe. I mm -hmm. couldn't find anything that would have caramelized it, so I was kind of... Tomato paste, cloves, coriander, cumin, red pepper flakes, cabbage, olive oil, kosher salt, and chopped dill, parsley, or cilantro. That's it. Huh. Sour Under cream. Yeah, you know, they, they, oh, they put, put a dollop on, on it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next Looks one. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Apple cider donut loaf cake. So these are things that we don't actually eat. And yeah, we did notice a lot of cakes and breads in yeah. this uh, choice of ten things. We had an Earl Grey yogurt cake, an apple cider donut loaf cake, and the focaccia. Sour cream and onion biscuits. Biscuits, yeah. yeah so the, and then one pot, uh, a gingery chicken with rice and peanut sauce. Well, the peanut sauce, a lot of people are allergic to peanuts. I am. Mm -hmm. uh, mildly, not... Right. You, have a, you do yeah, have a reaction. I, I have a reaction. Yeah. Ginger, of course, is good, and chicken, of course, is good. Mm -hmm. The rice you could do without, so mm -hmm. you could make this without the peanuts and uh, without the is, rice. They do recommend basmati rice, but, mm -hmm. you know. Which is a little bit better. It's, yeah, uh, but yeah. I, I don't do well with rice myself. Uh, then number eight is French onion beef, beef noodle, noodle soup. And, of course, we know that uh, onion soups are really good. No, I just had some. Recently, any soups are actually, you know, things that make you feel good. And here yeah. you have well, the other it. one. Well, that's it. You know, the hot liquid, and mm. that's the ch chicken. Yeah. The hot liquid. Want to go down a little? No, up. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. But there's the beef noodle. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of a take on onion soup. You know, uh, onion soup is good. It's. Uh, has a nice flavor to it. Yeah, it's, it's nice very sweet. Mm -hmm. And the classic chicken noodle soup, of course, this also always makes you feel good. Yeah, or whatever soup your mom gave you when you weren't yeah, feeling well right. when, you were, when you were eight or six. Yeah. You know, that's and normally we uh, not use any of these noodles and things like that. So yeah. a lot of these things we wouldn't make, but you made some brownies over the weekend per and probably one of the best brownies you've ever made. Yeah, I've been tweaking the recipes. Yeah, for 25 years. <laughs> it keeps getting better. <laughs> yeah, it I does. Say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and this time there was a little espresso in it too, which was really yeah. nice. But uh, yeah, yeah, you make some. Stop giving away my secrets. Oh, okay. Jeez, you do that every time. <laughs> well, I haven't uh, given the recipe out. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, and then you have uh, pantry path pasta with vegan vegan, vegan. Uh -huh. uh, cream sauce, whatever that is. What's vegan cream? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's open this up and find out. Let's okay, see. that's interesting. Yeah, what's in that recipe? Uh, well, we'll have to tell you when we get back. Yeah, so we'll be right back, <laughs> folks. Stick around. <laughs> Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. And welcome back. I'd like to remind you to pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder. This is over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients, so it's easy to take, and it's all powered by fulvic and humic acid. These are nature's preferred delivery system, and it gets the good stuff in. And lets the bad stuff out. Yes, and of course we have, this is $89, and you know, we, last year, about midway through the year, we got a huge price increase in this Primal Edge, about 15%. We didn't pass it on, in fact, we just came off of a sale, and we do this once in a while, but not very often. It's $89, it's really worth it to get all the vitamins and minerals in here, if you did it separately or going to some other people, you'd be paying 120 and more. And for it's this. a subscription, gets delivered to your door once a month. That's right. Age bottles of 30 day supply. Yep. And the Health Signals newsletter follows the show, so all the articles that we talk about here are in here. It's $10 a month. You get the issues on the 1st and the 15th of the month. Yeah. And a new one that was out the other day. And uh, next we go to, uh, I thought this kind of fell in line with what we were talking about, those recipes that we're talking about, the comfort food. This is really why America's in problems. If you had this once in a while as a comfort food, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a bad thing. But if you were doing this on a regular basis where these th become staples, mm -hmm. and we find that the poorer populations use these as staples because this is less expensive food. Well, anybody who can, who is on a tight budget is going to be eating things that are easy to get, uh, inexpensive. Last a long time. And also filling and satisfying, at least yep. on the surface. Yeah, at least on the surface, yeah. that's right. Maybe yeah. not nutritionally good, but yeah. they sure taste good. So now we have some new U.S. dietary guidelines. and well, The uh, first question is, you know, who actually follows these guidelines? I mean, they come out every five years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the bulk of the population, do you think they're actually... Maybe not, but certainly the institutions like the Edu Board of Education, who is feeding the kids, and probably the do old folks' so? homes. Yeah, I think they follow that, yeah, sure. I think okay. they have to. All right. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about it was that they came up with... Then now they've added scientific committee recommendations that children under the age of two consume no added sugars at all. But yeah. they don't... They, do, they say added sugars, 
Yeah, uh, and this is sugar on top of whatever is in the processed natural. food. Yeah. The well, there are some naturals, which is in the fruits, of course. And we always recommend don't eat your fruit in the morning. Eat it in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, eat it uh, because after of the that, protein. Yeah, and uh, eat it after the protein. Don't start your day with a sugar shock. Start it with a protein and fat, mm -hmm. and that will last a long time. Uh, it uh, d did recommend, they had a committee here that recommended to cut sugar and to cut alcohol. Uh, well, they the, yeah, decided the not guidelines. to do that. The guidelines. The guidelines, yeah. The to reduce the percentages and yeah. they had recommended for added sugars to limit it to 6% of your daily calories and right now it's at 10%. Yeah. And then uh, and uh, then limit alcohol beverages men one drink per day down from two. Yeah. Now sugar itself is not a bad thing if you just use it very little. The problem is it's in everything. So if you're buying some kind of processed food, it's going to be in that processed food in some form or another, whether it's actually sugar or whether it's fructose, which is kind of worse for your liver and things like that. So mm -hmm. these well, guidelines... Well, they, didn't, they didn't take those suggestions. Mm -hmm. they no, were. they didn't. They didn't. And uh, I think for sugar, you know, you really have to do away with the processed food and then the sugar doesn't become a problem and it's kind of the same thing with the alcohol if you're not eating a bunch of processed food you're not eating potatoes and rice and things like that uh, which are high carbohydrates, Lunch then the alcohol doesn't affect you quite the same way. It doesn't add on to the calories in a sense. Oh, so the, it's, it's a little bit different. So the, the interesting thing for me about this article was mm -hmm. that they talked about when they were reviewing the committee recommendations, they decided not to include the lower limits because, quote, the new evidence is not substantial enough to support changes to quantitative recommendations for either added sugars or alcohol. Right. They said that there was uh, the new limits required by the scientific committee did not meet a preponderance of the evidence standard that's required by law. Meanwhile, everybody acknowledges that we're having a uh, an epidemic of um, obesity and diabetes and cancer and heart trouble and things that are directly related to sugars and bad diet. Yeah, and every processed food has some sugar added or salt added. They have to uh, to enhance the taste. Yeah, well, you got to read the labels. Oh, well, yeah, that's kind of shocking yeah. when you yeah. do. So these are recommendations they come out with every year. Uh, we every know every five years or every five years. Mm -hmm. Is that what it says? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. We were committed to issuing guidelines based on sound evidence in open and transparent process. We believe at the end of the day, that's what we did here. Mm -hmm. So it's good to read these and go over them and kind of solidify why we're eating the way we are yeah. we you know since we don't have much sugar in the house we don't eat it on a regular basis we add it to maybe a, a little coffee here and I there put some raw sugar in my yeah. coffee yeah. Uh, but i also put honey in my coffee yeah and that sounds odd to people but you don't taste the honey but it just adds a little sweetness that doesn't go through your pancreas and mm -hmm. uh, it's better, a little better for you if you're gonna, if you need the sweetness, you want yeah. the sweetness. Uh, my producer wanted me to mention the phone number here is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you'd like to give us a call. Um, you know, this is something that comes out every year, and it's a good thing to look at. And, uh, you know, you really have to look at the whole uh, processed food industry and put it out of your diet. Yeah. I would say that's the it's best thing to do. It's interesting, too, is that we've come a long way from the food pyramid, you know, from that when the USDA uh, was recommending, you know, starting with the carbohydrates. Yeah, at the bottom. <coughs> carbohydrates oh, at the me. bottom, and then you'd add a little meat in there, uh, maybe uh, pasta they put next. They actually they put the meat, I think, uh, last, on top, right yeah. on the top, where it actually should be the basis <laughs> for yeah, us. But, but, you know, it makes you... I feel better knowing that they're at least looking at it every mm -hmm. few years and coming out with new guidelines and adjustments, but it just seems uh, it's not, it's it's too little too late or it's not reaching the population that it needs to reach. People just aren't aren't in tune to the fact of you are what you eat and, and it's, uh, that's an old cliche saying, but it yeah. really is true. Yeah. Well, we had this movement starting in the 90s that we kind of latched onto, which was the paleo movement, and then they talked about the ketones, and then we, uh, yeah. the big thing now is the carnivore diet, which is kind of what we do, but not completely. Right. Uh, we do eat a lot of uh, our proteins and fats do come from animal sources. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to find the cleanest possible. 
and we think that puts us right on the right track. And the rest of it isn't isn't that important to us. Uh, if we eat a little pasta now and then and a chicken soup or something, it doesn't impact us. But when you make these things, the daily ritual of eating bread and eating pasta or cereals or any type of processed, heavily processed food, you're going to go downhill as far as health is concerned. It just makes a lot of sense. Well, it's not real us, food. That takes us to the... The, ca the burp catching. Yes, and I want to cows. save that for the next segment because yeah. that's really an important thing to understand too. Is that there is a lot of regulations. It has to do with what you eat. Well, it has to do whether you can digest food or not, right. and that's really what right. this is about, too. The, the guidelines are there mm -hmm. to help us digest food, and we have always said that these processed foods that are in boxes and cans and things like that are the worst food. Well, uh, when you read the ingredients on a box and it's, it's you know, two things are organic and the rest is some kind of chemical names that no one can pronounce, you have to wonder what the heck you're eating. Yeah. Well, we don't eat it, is what I say. <laughs> well, we don't. Yeah. But, uh, so well, during the break, please pick up our Primal Edge, our One Shot Wonder, $89 a month, and then the Health Signals newsletter, $10 a month. Please pick those things up, and uh, Ellen and I will be right back. You've heard Nico DeHaan as co-host of Living a Primal Lifestyle, which airs every Friday at noon Eastern time on TFNN, and would like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And welcome back. So this article, uh, Burp Catching Mask for Cows Could Slow Down Climate Change. Oh, my goodness. 
Uh, there are over 1.6 billion cattle on Earth, and their burps and farts are becoming a big problem, folks. <laughs> Cow expel <laughs> methane, a colorless and odorless gas, which is approximately 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide when it comes to warming the planet. <laughs> Blame it on the cows. Blame it on the cows. <laughs> so this company, uh, this is called Zelp. It's a UK company uh, developed a uh, potential solution in the form of burp catching face mask for cows. This is just bizarre on many, many levels to me. <laughs> the firm was founded by uh, two brothers from San Francisco, or two brothers named Fran Francis Francisco and Patricio Norris, whose family run a livestock farm in Argentina. We're aware in every country methane is one of the biggest problems, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, it's, you know, the, it says that 95% of the cattle's methane emissions come from their nostrils and mouths. So, according to them, this mask detects, captures, and oxidizes methane when it's ex exhaled by the animals and then lets it out as uh, carbon dioxide well, and uh, Well, generally, water. solutions to the livestock industry's methane problem have come in the form of feed additives, which inhibit the production of the gas in the cow's stomach by altering their digestive process. So instead of changing the animal's microbiology, they are going to have this in their normal food, and it's not it, going to... Supposedly, it helps them digest their normal foods without yeah. the interference. Right. I so, don't know. Well, the big thing, of course, we know why they're producing methane. It's mm -hmm. the same reason why we would produce methane, why we belch and fart, things like that. It's because of the food. And uh, it's the it's quality of... It's a digestive of, process. It's a digestive process, and these things have a lot of gas in it. So if you're feeding cows, instead of their natural feed, which is grass or hay in the wintertime, mm -hmm. then you're feeding them grains, most likely in the United States or the U.K., corn. Mm. So if you're feeding okay. them corn, they're going to be belching and they're going to be farting because this is not their natural food. They don't have quite the good net mechanism for getting rid of this stuff naturally. In grass, it doesn't do that. In hay, it doesn't do that. So uh, this and is something that <laughs> when you change your diet like we did, you mm -hmm. start noticing that you don't uh, pass gas anymore. Mm -hmm. from either end mm -hmm. and it's a big important thing because you know during this holiday we had a couple of chips here and there with mm -hmm. salsa just for the fun mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. it didn't really cause me any problems but it does cause me gas yeah but only just for a very short period of just, time yeah, really while we're just, yeah because mm -hmm. we don't eat it normally yeah. but imagine the cows eating this all the time then they're going to be farting all the time they're going to be belching all the time i wonder if they're coming up with a diaper for the other end i don't know <laughs> You know, it's kind of bizarre. So well, then, why you know, not go back to the natural system, which, you know, if you look on the web now, there are many, many people in the industry that uh -huh, are going back to uh -huh, the old ways of uh -huh. doing things, rotating the land, uh -huh. letting them eat naturally, letting them find their own, helping them when winter comes. And, and the other thing, we, t we actually covered this a few shows ago four or five shows ago and talking about natural farming and the yeah. and the rotation of not only crops but of uh, the population of animals as well and how they're synergistic and they work on from each other and and it all has to do with it's what you eat for your natural digestion and whether it works with your body chemistry yeah. and then that's what what you know can you can you raise that picture up just a little? Yeah, there you go. Now, imagine how happy that cow is to <laughs> walk around with that mask on its face. That's so, and, and my favorite part of this article is where it says, the mask fits comfortably on a cow's head. <laughs> <laughs> how in the world do they know that? I don't know. Are they going to come up with colors? And, you know. uh, yeah, uh, or uh, maybe branded for the, for the farm. Or, yeah, now you, know. you don't have to brand a cow. You can just It's brand. a whole new area for masks, you know. It's like... Well, it's so only weird. fair that they may wear a mask when we oh, have to wear weird. masks, too. It's, don't just, yeah. it's odd. So we're going to have, maybe the dogs will be wearing masks next and things like that. Yeah, dogs have been known to pass gas. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> In fact, when Grandma used to do it, uh, the dog always got kicked. Isn't that the big joke? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, <that>. darn dog. <laughs> yeah. So, folks, the, the, the problem is... Uh, 
always the food. So if yeah. these uh, cows are eating their natural, if you go to some of these websites like uh, Joe Salatino uh, out of uh, Pennsylvania, he says, we don't feed our cattle and their pigs and their chickens. We take them to areas where the feed is, mm -hmm. and which is the natural stuff. So they have a nice system where they bring in cows for a while, and then they take the cows out, mm -hmm. they bring the chickens in the to get all, yeah, to get yeah. all the mm -hmm. uh, manure and everything like that, and then they bring the pigs in, which root everything, mm -hmm. and then they let it lay for for maybe 30 to 90 days, mm -hmm. and then they start the process all over again. So they have all these different uh, pastures that are designated for certain times, so these processes can be naturally. And of course, you're doing some really good stuff for the land. Mm -hmm. You're doing something really good for the Being animals. Nourish, nourishing and, and yeah, replenishing. And mm -hmm. the good for the animals, because then the animals are healthy. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is then they pass that health on to us in the form mm. of, well, you know, yeah. when they're slaughtered humanely. Remember, the when we slaughter animals, we do it in the most humane process possible. In the wild, this doesn't happen. In the wild, if you've ever seen animals being killed, then that is where it's, pretty violent. Uh, it's a violent thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they go into coma and things like that. So they're not hurt in a sense, but you know, you hear them crying and things like that. So it's much more humane this way. Uh, it's the animals are much happier. We want the animals to be happy. Just think, More we've natural. been shut in for months mm. now. Mm. Now think of cattle, pigs, chickens, and when they're jammed together, they have feelings too. Come on, yeah. you know. Well, so, uh, and it's not healthy for the animals. So now we have to uh, make these animals well because they're getting sick from the confinement, probably sick from the feed, and certainly sick because of the uh, well, pollution yeah. that they produce mm -hmm. being confined like that yeah. instead of being out in the open. Now, if you're sitting in the bathroom and you're the sixth person in there, it's not too much fun in there. And that's, what the, <laughs> that's the way the cow feels. All right. Too. So, I mean, <laughs> right. it's just common sense that we don't want to confine things when, you know, uh, well, these cows are not, eating, they're going to the bathroom, and come on, it doesn't, it's not yeah. good. Yeah, well, and, you know, something else that struck me as interesting in this article is that they're talking... The Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN predicts that dairy and beef uh, consumption is going to rise by approximately 70 percent in the next 30 years. And, you know, other people are saying that the land is going bad and there's not going to be enough cattle. And all of a sudden there's all this Franken food and this... Uh, meat substitutes and so on. Well, so, I think still know. half the world is eating naturally off the land and the other half is, you know, industrialized. And I think what they're talking about here is that we are industrializing more and more people. So more and more people are coming out from their old lifestyle, which is kind of farming and kind of just... Yeah, but they're saying the that land. beef and dairy consumption is going to rise. Yeah, and the reason is because these people are now, instead of subsisting in the woods in some other place now they're becoming part of the economy and the economy is where the beef is yeah but how are they going to raise the beef if the land's not good and how are, and if there isn't any land left and yeah. you know there, there's well, this, this is the problem they have and this is why we have to right. nurture our wild balance. yeah definitely i like the wild stuff and i like the balance yeah <laughs> and we'll be right back balancing everything Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. 
There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. It's 2021, but magically on January 1st, all of the stress and the aggravation and the fear and everything from 2020 did not actually evaporate and disappear. <laughs> no, it didn't. It's been a cumulative thing. It's been a difficult year yeah. and um, with many challenges. And, and I think we all need some rest. And that was one of the reasons we went to Daytona to take ourselves out of our normal routine and to give ourselves a little something. But we we're right on the beach. We walked on the beach. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, but when you think of rest, many people just think of sleep. But uh, there's a very interesting article here that talks about seven different types of rest. Yeah, this is pretty fascinating to me uh, because we really, just, when we think of rest, we just think, well, I need to take a nap, uh, perhaps, or uh, I need to go to bed. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we think. Mm -hmm. But there are other types of rest. I thought it was very interesting, too, because uh, the the process of getting rest a lot of times, I mean, if you're wired to the gills, you know, because of activity or something, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're just lying there awake and you can't go to sleep. You can't force yourself to sleep because that's being awake. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, it's really odd. I mean, it's either you're, you're uh, ready for it or you're not ready for it. And one of the basic things I've found is consistency is the big thing for yeah. me. If I go to bed at 9 o'clock and wake up at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. that's the best for me. Uh, and I usually get a pretty good night's sleep. Yeah, and it's part of your circadian rhythm yeah. that, you, that you establish when you need that. So, yeah. you know, yes, physical rest is definitely an important rest. You need to get sleep. And we had talked, we talked the last show about what happens when you don't get enough sleep and the, and the detrimental effects to your health and well-being. Yeah. And, of course, what happens if you're not getting enough sleep, then you're in a deficit and there's really no way to catch up. Maybe a nap the next day or something like that may catch you up, but usually it doesn't. And usually that deficit starts adding up, and that's where we, we get into trouble health-wise, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, then they say, okay, now what other kinds of rest are there? And I've got... Well, you want to rest your brain. That's the first mental thing. Mental rest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, well, so, physical rest is the first thing we think of. Yeah, right? and that's what we're talking about, sleep and, and so on. And um, the, So mental rest, how do you know when you need mental rest? And, you know, it's, it's a matter of you've been reading a book, but somehow you've been looking at the same paragraph for the last 25 minutes, don't remember what you read. You yeah, know, or you know. start on a page and then you find out, well, I read all these pages before. Right, <laughs> you know, yeah. so mentally you're going, oh, yeah. And it also is uh, when you find yourself starting to think more negatively about things. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
judging things you're doing and and then uh, so how do you deal with mental or how do you get mental rest and one way is to disconnect from your devices and take yeah. a, just take a break turn off your screens and take a few moments and well i think that's kind of what we do when it rolls around eight o'clock at our house we mm -hmm. kind of shut things down the tv kind of goes off mm -hmm. uh, and we kind of uh, either read or i might go in the other room and watch a little news or something like that but uh, very relaxing well, it hasn't Not. been, that's true, but it's, it's kind of the way I detune, yeah, just, well, just to kind of, of summarize the day. Voices. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah. you know, I don't pay a lot of attention to what's being said, but it's kind of the summarization for me. Yeah. So what my dad did, maybe that's the habit I got uh -huh. into. Uh -huh. but, but the point here, too, is like during the day when I'm working, mm -hmm. I have to, sometimes I just have to stop and get up, walk around the house a little bit, go get some fresh water, mm -hmm. um, you know, look out the window do something just for a couple minutes to give myself that little bit of mental rest. Yeah, and a lot of times I find myself, if I'm mentally stressed, then I want to put things off. I don't feel like doing that today. And even though I may schedule something and I say, okay, I'm not going to do that today, I'll, I'll say, well, I feel guilty, I'll start it. And once I start it, I go, oh, this isn't so bad after all. Well, yeah, and, you're very, and you can be very productive when you do that. And, yeah. and I've been doing that, too, in the past the two weeks when I was on vacation and... I would find myself saying, okay, stop doing this yeah, and go things. do the dishes or go do something else. I mean, we, we worked on the week, during the week, to clean out the, the junk room. <laughs> that but was yeah. fun. Yeah. So now if you put anything on the table in there, your, your life is working. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, the next thing in line on here is called social rest. And uh, social rest, uh, I immediately think of... Uh, the socialization of these apps that we have, like Twitter and Facebook. Well, at first, it used to be a, an issue of going out too much, you know, going out every weekend, seeing your friends all the time, right. the time you know, being with right. the family all the time. But now it's become more focused on being on devices too much and... and uh, yeah. So uh, now maybe it's a good time to just schedule yourself uh, a social rest where you put your devices away. It's, it's, you find it difficult a lot of times. You'll put the thing down, you put it in the charger, okay, I'm done, and then a few minutes later you think, oh, let me look up something else, and then but you're right back on the darn thing. Yeah, well, I, you know, some people have less problems with that than others. Some people mm -hmm. are more drawn to that than yeah. others. And it's, it's important to be in tune with what your pattern is yeah. and, and force yourself to be mindful of it and then take it make a different choice yeah and of know. course the same device being used for our research for our show mm -hmm. uh, for the newsletter mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for just doing things well, uh, and, and we you use enjoy our very much doing that kind of research I'm more a person who likes to read fiction yeah you know and yeah. so I read every night using the black screen application of the so that I don't have the light you know and, right. and that helps me tune down for the evening uh, so we have it's also, I think, uh, one other thing on yeah. social rest here is that it's important. To, this points out that it's important to find the people who are who are simpatico with you, who are in your tribe, who support you, who don't judge you, and so you're not always on your guard and you're not competing with them. Right. And you're feeling that kind of support, and that's another way to get social rest. Yeah. Uh, creative rest, this is something uh, that uh, I used quite a bit. And a lot of times when you're practicing guitar or learning a new song or maybe just writing mm -hmm. a song, uh, play for 10 minutes, put the guitar down for 10 minutes, pick it up again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it doesn't have to be large segments of things uh, f to be creative. It just has to be you're in there and you're doing it, and then... You just drop out of it and go back in. And, I find and that maybe the best. it's baking bread, and maybe it's yeah. uh, taking a walk, and and maybe in nature, it's, yeah. maybe it's working on a jigsaw puzzle. Maybe yeah. it's knitting. You know, reading a book. Some just something that uh, gives you a, your brain a little change of yeah. pace. Then uh, a emotional rest. Uh, this is a. a Offloading your feelings, de-stressing, taking a, a therapy session. I use it in the uh, sauna, mm -hmm. you know, those mm -hmm. types of things. I use it uh, spiritual rest too, kind of like. Um, yeah, yeah, and I spiritual mean, rest can be. It, it certainly can be your religious practices, but it doesn't have to be so formal. Or you could put the Bible into the drawer right. and let, let, let it rest for a while, uh, put it away. Uh, well, it can also mean that you. That you give some thought to your life and, yeah. and that you're thinking about other people and what can you do. 
Uh, volunteering is a good way to get some spiritual rest. Yeah. You feel like you're giving back and making a difference. And then the last thing on here is the sens sensory rest, which uh, again goes back to our computers and things yeah. like that. So. Well, and they talk about getting away from the computer and and you know step out in the fresh air. And go for a walk or do something like you do. Go get a book and read a book, mm -hmm. and that's a different sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think mm -hmm. those are good things. And uh, this is the time of year I always think of this, so that, this is why I brought that up. So stick around. I got, we got a little bit more. I uh, got uh, something you may not uh, know. So stick around. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the Newsletter tab. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has developed a daily programming lineup for traders by traders. We start every trading day live at 8.30 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien hosting the morning market kickoff as he starts the day off by breaking down everything you need to know about what's going on for the trading day ahead. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento takes your calls and questions live on the air for the opening bell as he hosts Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Trading Hour. At 11 a.m., it's Kevin Hanks and Alex Coffey from TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market, Basil Chapman at noon with the Tiger Technicians Hour, Steve Rhodes hosts the Trader's Edge at 1 p.m., Dave White with the Power Trading Hour at 2 p.m., and Tom O'Brien closes out the day for the final hour of trading live from 3 till 4. Don't miss a second of our daily programming lineup. Tune in to Tiger TV every trading day live at TFNN.com. Educating investors. So this last article is about the shower and the towels. <laughs> this is uh, something I didn't really know. I, I think we're okay the way we yeah. handle our well, towels. But yeah. Basically what they're saying here is that if you're using your towel over and over again, you're basically ruining the shower you just took because the bacteria and things are on your towel. Uh, but the point is that the towels are they're talking about damp towels. Right. They're talking about, you know, you want to use your own towel. Right. And then, and then they talk about... Uh, making sure that you dry your towel on a rack or you, or a towel bar instead of hanging it on a hook. Right. And, and don't bunch uh, it up in the corner. <laughs> yeah, don't throw it on the floor. Right, right. right. And then uh, you want to, if the towel dries between uses, apparently it really minimizes the bacteria. Well, I like so. what you do a lot of times, just throw the towels in the dryer for a little while. Yeah, I do uh, every couple of days yeah. just to and that, freshen uh, them up. Yeah, that'll freshen them up, and I think that's a good idea. We use our towels for about a week. 
Right, and it and, is a week. Yeah, yeah and it's, mm -hmm. it is on a bar, they're mm -hmm. hung, and they're dry. They dry, yeah, they dry pretty dry. nice. Yeah. yeah, they do. So it's yeah. important to do that. Uh, you can't be using that same old towel, and uh, if it's wet while you're using it, then it's obvious that those germs are multiplying in there. Right. It's probably worse than you were before. Right. Yeah, putting them right back on you, which you just yeah. washed off. You know, it's interesting. When I was growing up, uh, you know, dishes got washed, and then they got dried with a dish towel. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got out of my parents' home into my apartment and I began looking into things more carefully and so on, I discovered, I, I saw something that said that if you leave your dishes to air dry, it is much more sanitary than using a wet, basically wet, drying towel. That is being used to, on all these different dishes. On all dishes. the different dishes. Sure. And, yeah. and uh, it, it was, that was great. And, and of course it meant I didn't have to dry the dishes. <laughs> That's a bonus right there, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I thought that was interesting. And then this kind of plays along with the same idea that... Uh, well, we did things that our parents did. Oh, uh, sure. Until, you know, oh, sure. the first thing I did, I remember I opened the door and said, I'm air conditioning the whole neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, so, right, right. Yeah. But uh, these are uh, things that we part learned. part looks like the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the part in your hair, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and, you know, so, so folks, uh, step in the shower, wash off all the negativity and the, and the problems that occurred in 2020, and let's start fresh and new in 2021 with a good attitude and a can-do attitude, and, and let's make this the best year ever. Yeah. Be well. Thanks for sticking around, folks. Bye. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters.